You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Each week, Cheryl will feature and discuss the many challenges of those living with disabilities, along with the various issues that are faced by their families that are caring for them. So now, please welcome the host of Courage to Overcome, Cheryl Jennings. Welcome. This is Cheryl Jennings, your host tonight on Courage to Overcome, and you're listening to BBM Global Network, and I am privileged to have you as my guest tonight. I really have got so many exciting things that are going on around us, and there's so many people that I want to mention that there are ways that we can get involved, and I want to do this by sharing some of the things that I have been reading about that are happening, not just in my own town, but around in other places. For instance, I have a good friend who is the mother of an autistic child, and I was looking on her Facebook postings, and I saw that Vanderbilt is coming out with a program that is going to be helping people with autism to learn how to be able to drive. And it's going to be a virtual reality driving game that will actually help teenagers and help them to learn how to use their quick reaction skills for unforeseen occurrences that they might be having. And this is just one thing that I just want to say, I am so happy that we are progressing in our world where we can really help one another more. Tonight, I want to focus a little bit on the ways that we can get involved, the things that we can do that would help those of us who are dealing with the problems at home versus those who are not but can still be supportive. And those who are teachers as well as families with their children and how can families help one another? How can teachers help? And just let's talk a little bit about all the various ways that we can get involved to help people who have any kind of a special need. Right now we're kind of focused on autism and Asperger's syndrome. And I just want to say that I have been working on this for quite a while. And you know that I've told you that I have a son that has cerebral palsy. And because of all the things that we've gone through in our own lives and the number of people that we have met that have helped us through the years, I have discovered something that I know is not shocking. And yet I think sometimes we take it for granted that people are going to have all the support that they need, but they don't. I hear this all the time from people. I have been working on a book and I'm finishing it up this week and it's going to be called A It takes courage to be a caregiver. I'm sending it to a publisher at the end of this week, and it will be coming out the first week of October. And I'm really thrilled about this because I've been working on it for a while and had tried to finish it earlier, but we had a lot of things that were going on in our family that caused us to have to postpone some of our own issues and not be able to do some of the things that we wanted to do, some health issues. So I would just like to say that, It takes a long time to put together some research and to pull together the ideas when you're working on a book. But this one will be talking about many things that I've learned from guests who have been on the show, as well as people that have helped me throughout my life. We'll be talking about issues that deal with families that have children as well as parents that they're caring for. And I just want you to know that this will be coming out. If you're interested in keeping up with this, of course, you can go to my webpage. And it's www.courage2, T-O, overcome, dot club. 
This is a new place that I've just gotten set up, and so we're still adding things to it. We're going to be putting some podcasts on, but I also have a place where people can see where I'm speaking and some things that will be coming up. So if you're interested in getting informed about what's going on, I hope you'll check out this webpage. And if you are a family member or you know someone that has a child with special needs, I've done some research on the top 10 problems that families face when they have a child that they're caring for and what are those top issues and how can we help them and I've put together a little PDF that will give a few tips on how to deal with some of those problems that they say they face. I also have noticed this week in the paper that in our own community and I imagine a lot of other places we're having a time for racing where special needs children will be involved in it as well as those who might be pushing them if they're in a wheelchair and it's called spirit of survival in our area but I know that there have been other places that are doing special olympics and my niece who lives in Idaho was just involved in one that was a golf tournament this weekend up in Idaho and I'm proud of her I'm I'm so excited that she is able to participate in many things Lauren has learned to run and she got to represent the state over in Special Olympics International in Athens Greece a few years ago and came home with the medal for Idaho and so these things are per- personal to me, but they're also something that I notice a lot of people get involved. They can rally around that person that's in that uh, Olympic game, and they can give their support by rooting, by cheering, by participating, by helping someone, or even just being there, standing and cheering on your feet till the last person crosses a finish line. You see, it's so important for us to give them that feedback that they need. I remember when our son was small and we would take him, we lived in Texas at the time, and we would take him to do the Special Olympics Games at the Texas A&M Stadiums. And of course, there were so many people that were there. And they had games going on all over the whole field and in various places. They were doing things like softball throw and, you know, letting the kids do different kinds of activities, but my favorite part was when they had the wheelchair race. They would often have all of the kids that were participating in a certain age group or ability to be out there in the different lines like you were lining up for a race for anyone. And it was so interesting to watch the children as they would get ready to run because they were just as excited as if this was the most important thing in their whole lives, and they were watching people who were watching them. They were watching the stands, and they were all excited. In fact, when they would shoot the gun or whatever it was they did to start the activity, I can't remember if it's a gun now, but when they would have that sound, the kids would look around, they would start smiling, some of them would go forward, some would go backward, some would go sideways, but no matter how they were moving, everybody was standing on their feet, cheering, and trying to help these children learn to keep going until they cross the finish line, and it might take 15 minutes for them to go just a few yards, but you see, the point is that every person there was important. Every person was able to be cheered on and to be recognized and to be clapped for. And it's not something that happens every day of your life. It doesn't for anyone. So here are the things that I would just like to say. Let's talk about some of these things tonight. I know I'll have some people call in, and last week we had such a wonderful time, and we just enjoyed the conversation with other people calling in. So I want to tell you, if you're interested in being part of this discussion tonight, you can call in and be part of it also. And if the line is busy, then call back in a few minutes. But the number is 855-856-1380. And I want to talk a little bit about how we can support each other, what are some activities that we can do, and one of the most important things that I see that we need to do is to learn how to really encourage and boost each other's spirits if it's at school, if it's at home, if it's our neighbor, if it's at church, wherever it is. We need to learn how to be a friend who is there to back someone up, and it's 
it doesn't matter if you're not special needs, but especially if you are, because you have such limited ability to do things for other people. You really need to know that people are watching you and that they care about you. I want to open the discussion tonight, and I'll be having some people that I know are going to try to call in, so I'm looking forward to that. But if you know of any event that's going on in your area, in your state, that you'd like to mention and say uh, a word about other people getting involved in it, I hope that you'll feel free to use that phone and to call in and to be part of the program tonight. Again, the number is 855-856-1380. And I want to just pick up with talking a little bit about the webpage again and tell you if you're interested in doing it, I would love for you to write this down because it's Courage to Overcome, but you spell out the two with the T-O, Courage to Overcome dot club. And that's where you're going to keep up with a lot of information that we're going to try to put together and get it out there where you can get your hands on it. Because I know things that you can read are so important to help you just move forward in life. So all right, we are going to stop and take a little break. And when we come back, we'll be talking to some guests. And this is Cheryl Jennings with Courage to Overcome. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. And tonight, our conversation on Courage to Overcome is talking about what we can do to support one another when we are facing problems with special needs children like autism or Asperger's syndrome. In fact, it just dawned on me that I have a good friend that actually was on the show a few months ago, and I was reading a post about a book that she's just come out and been able to publish, and she talked about how she was not even diagnosed until she was an adult that she had Asperger's syndrome, and I just want to let you know that that is on the autism spectrum, but it's higher functioning, and it has to do more with uh, some of the things that People do not relate as well, maybe in, on the social level, but they do function much better. And so I have a guest on here that I'm going to bring on and ask her if she can tell us a little bit more about this. Donna, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Thank you for joining us. I was just talking about Asperger's syndrome and wondered if you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. You mentioned one of the primary things that we see when working with Asperger's uh, is the lack of social skills and being able to read social situations. A lot of times, uh, children and adults 
misunderstand. They don't read body cues, and they don't read um, the whole situation. They, they're they working very limited on interaction skills. Also, another thing you see, they're very sensitive to sounds and textures and light. A lot of sensory issues come up. So in a so- social city situation such as a crowd, like if you're going to Disney or Universal or even the fair or church, you have all these sounds and people, they can't weed out all of this and it becomes overwhelming. And that's when you start seeing panic attacks or what you what some people call as meltdowns. So that's a big thing to have to work with. And if parents understand that, you were talking about groups. If you have parents, I, I truly believe that there needs to be more community involvement of, of getting parents together that have children with Asperger's and autism. So parents of older children can help mentor parents with younger kids because they've walked those paths and they know what's available in the community that maybe the schools or the doctors are not always sharing because they're not always aware. So, you know, working with other parents that have kids like yours is such a big help because it, it's a good way to compare some things. Well, how did you deal with the lights and stuff to help your child calm down? How did you deal with crowds when your kid was having a meltdown? Because at parents, it's embarrassing sometimes when your kids start screaming and you know, nobody understands that your child is sensitive to these things. So it, you, know, there's, you need support. You need those other parents to help you out to get through those things to say, hey, my kid did that too, and this is what we did, and it's okay. This happened. Well, and, you know, that is so true. And I remember one parent that I talked to one time said that she actually carries around a little card that just says, my child has autism, because she wanted people to know that this is not something that she just wasn't a good parent, didn't she was, it wasn't a lack of being able to control a child like often people can misunderstand, but rather it was the inability to deal with the surroundings. And I heard him talk about how just uh, sometimes just a light that is flickering may not make any difference towards me. I may not even notice it. And yet for a child with Asperger's or autism, they may freak out covering their ears and rocking back and forth and doing things that would seem very... uh, hard to understand if you're not used to it and don't understand it. But those are things that would really help if we became more tolerant and more understanding of other people and cut people some slack sometimes so they don't feel bad and think, oh, people are judging me on my parent skills when it's really something that they shouldn't have to go around explaining, but they feel the need to do that. Exactly, and parents need support with that. Also, another thing is you have teachers who don't understand this, even though they're trained in special ed, and developing teacher support groups where parents come in and say, hey, this is what my kid does. This is what we do. You could probably use this in the classroom or even going into the church where you have Sunday school workers and um, church activities saying, hey, this is my kid. This is what he does. You know, we as a group can work together to help prevent the meltdowns because my kid can benefit from all of these activities, benefit from social groups, going on trips, you know, being out in the community. The more parents speak up and the more parents are educated as well because our kids don't, kids with Asperger's and autism don't come with a manual. You know, they they come with a whole lot of uh, issues. And, you know, they change daily. That's the other thing. Your kid may have a meltdown and rock back and forth one day. The next day they may flap and, you know, run and hide. It's it's an ever-changing thing with how they react because they're different things every time that set them off and cause different things. But support is the main thing. The parents that I've seen that have support fare so much better and the stress level is lower and the child has less outbursts or meltdowns. Uh, There's a group in Georgia called Parent to Parent and a parent can call them and say, hey, I have a child with this, this, and this, and they will pair you up with a parent 
who has a child with with similar situations and you can talk and that's it's a really good thing to get that support okay well those are some great tips we're going to take a break and when we come back we'll pick this up and talk a little bit more about what we can do for one another this is courage to overcome you're listening to cheryl jennings your host Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. You are listening to Courage to Overcome. Tonight we're talking some more about autism, but also how we can get involved and help one another. And I was going to mention that there's a site on the Internet that I have found has got so much helpful information, and it's called Autism Speaks. And it talks a lot about families and adults, research, how to be an advocate, how to get involved. But one of the things I thought was very helpful was called a 100-Day Kit. And you can download it, and you can actually get a PDF of different things that you can do with somebody for 100 days. But it talks a lot about autism, the different diagnoses, the causes, the symptoms, talks about how to get child services, how autism is treated, some things that your child with autism wish you knew how to plan for the next weeks. And and it's just got a lot of information so that if a parent is wondering, I wonder what's wrong with my child, if it's any of these things, it lists out some of the different symptoms that you might read and go, oh, that sounds like me. And I do that sometimes myself. But it really will help a parent because a lot of times you can think, well, I'm not sure if there's anything wrong or not. And it could be they're just a little bit slower and you don't want to jump to any conclusion. But this site I have found is really good because it can break it down by age and you can understand, you know, what you could watch for, what kind of things could be hard for you to understand, but give you some tips on how to get some help that you need. Uh, Just before we left, Donna was talking about how the health is affected with parents sometimes when they have a child with special needs. And it reminded me of an article that I read during this last week where it actually was saying that mothers of children with autism have a higher rate of heart disease or heart problems. And I thought, you know, this is something that is brought on a lot of times because there's so much more stress. And if every day is different, and it can be that way for anybody for whatever reason, but if it's different from one day to the other with someone who can't tell you what they're thinking, what 
they feel or how things are going in their day and they just lack the communication skills, then this is something that brings on even more stress for a parent. And it is something that maybe just being able to get other friends involved in their lives could do a lot of help, could be a lot of help for them. I know that when we first found some help for our son, we had moved across country from Tennessee to Kansas. And when we went into a place that was helping the children that had, if they were deaf or if they had other problems, and our son had been diagnosed with cerebral palsy and he had been having some seizures, we just noticed that there was another woman that was pushing her child And we thought, you know, he looks a lot like our son, only a little bit older. And so we went over to her and we said, can we talk to you? And she said, oh, I'd be glad to. Well, we got to be very good friends because she had already been through things that we were just beginning to experience or we didn't understand what was happening. And being able to have someone to talk to who was going through some of the things that we were going through or had been through them just really was such a support to us because we didn't know what we were dealing with. We were told a diagnosis without understanding anything about what cerebral palsy was. We didn't understand what the seizures really were. We didn't get any information because the doctor just told us, I don't understand this because we didn't study it in school. Well, now we have more places that you can get the information, but we still need the human touch. And I was talking to Donna about this, and she was mentioning a group that is called Parent to Parent in Georgia. But there are other places that have got different kinds of support groups. And so if you are living in a state or a place where you have support groups where parents can network, I wish you would call into the show and tell us a little bit about what you have got in your community. Our number is 855-856-1380. And we would love to have you share with us what you've got that maybe other places are just not aware of yet. Now, I want to go back and ask Donna, uh, tell us a little bit about when you're at school and you teach some kids with uh, different kinds of special needs. So tell us a little bit about how you go about teaching someone that doesn't know how to do what other children might be able to do. Okay, right now, I I was in the school system for over 20 years and uh, as a teacher and administrator, but right now I'm a life coach. And I do work with uh, clients with Asperger's, both in school and as adults. And what I do is help them integrate back into the community. I actually go with them into social settings, and they're comfortable with me. So I'm there, like, eating out with people. Uh, going. I went to a Taekwondo class the other day with a client who actually was allowed. He has been empowered so much that he was able to teach a Taekwondo class, which was great big progress wow. for him. But the big oh, thing great. is having, having someone there with them to, it's, it's, you're almost like a Mary Poppins or like an Annie McPhee person where they build a relationship with you and you're like holding their hand, taking these baby steps. Sometimes you may go out for maybe 10 minutes in a social setting situation and then increase it the next time to 15 minutes and 20 minutes. And you have them order, you know, talking to a waiter. But you do role play before that out, you know, in their home, in their setting, where they're comfortable enough. You pull up the menus. How do you order? What do you need to say? Uh, If you want more tea, how do you flag down the waiter to uh, get their attention? You can't just sit there and hope that they'll just know what's going on. They don't understand you have to ask. And when they ask, they're not always sure how to do that. Also, when That's they're right. in classes, when they're in classes, uh, you can even go into the school setting and help a student and help a teacher understand a little bit more about the child's characteristics, what sets them off. That's a big key for parents to understand what are the triggers. Are they sensitive to light? Are they sensitive to sound? A lot of them have these fears about animals, 
also if a school is on a field trip or something and out comes a dog somewhere, you know, th- you know this kid's going to melt down. What do you do to help prevent that? Uh, oh, that's right, because if they are triggered by a dog, a dog's not going to, they're going to go after them even more if they are exactly. that sensitive sometimes. They sense the fear. They sense the fear. But there's a lot of things. Know your child and get out there and take baby steps. That's the biggest thing in helping with transition into social social situations. Oh. This is great. I want to hear some more of this. We do need to take another break, and we will be back in just a moment. This is Courage to Overcome. If you want to call in and be part of our program, the number is 855-856-1380. We'll be waiting for your call. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is, in fact, the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back. I am so glad that you're joining us tonight because this is really a wonderful time for us to talk a little bit about how we can help one another be supportive in networking with other families and finding out what other families need that we can do for them. And I am so excited because I've got somebody on the line now that I've met on Skype before and his name is Roy. He lives in California. And Roy, can you say hi tonight? Yes. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, everyone. I'm here I with s- my two friends uh, who are also on Skype. So April's here and Mary's here as well. So we're all going to be like one voice here. But uh, yes, yeah, Cheryl, go right ahead. Well, I was wanting you to describe how you met April. And April is the mother of an autistic son. And how what you've done to help her and you and and. April, can tell us a little bit about what networking means to you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a friend of mine about a year ago um, came up with another term for networking, and she referred to it as net friending. And I was all over that because networking sounds like, ah, some people are finding it to be a chore and boring and this and that. But net friending is just, just showing up and meeting someone for the first time and actually wanting to be a friend much more so than carry out any kind of a transaction. Because sometimes when people go into a networking situation, they're, they're coming in with an agenda. I, I, I got to sell a product or I got to do this or I got to tell them about my children or what have you. And I have found, and April can, can chime in as soon as I'm uh, done with my concept of net friending, which is when April and I met, we met on a um, like live stream platform. There were four seats. Anyway, we met there, and I got a chance to 
Well, net friend with her in a meet and greet on Skype, and we talked for about two hours, two and a half hours, and I really liked who she is um, as a person. And then I found out that she's the mom of a um, autistic child, six years old, nonverbal, and then we started talking about that and how we had something in common because I can help her with connecting parents within the special needs and or autism community. And so once we found out that we could work together better as friends than we could with just an agenda, because if we don't really like each other, I mean, I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to turn it over to April. And um, April, so what, what was net friending for you when you started to realize, hey, I just want to be friends with you and see what happens? Doors opened, big, bright, <laughs> welcoming doors. Um, I was on a path to wanting to start a local nonprofit for autism and special needs here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it just wasn't working out for me no matter which way I turned. Uh, it just wasn't meant to be uh, because this dear friend of mine, Roy, had not yet entered my life. And he's helped me come out of my shell. And um, I, I started doing a net friending masterclass with him where he was, we were just befriending each other and he was challenging my way of thinking and it really helped me in my parenting and and in work and you know how when things in your life um all it takes is, is one one moment in time one positive step forward and as you're moving forward what you're learning it just kind of trickles into every other aspect of your life like a domino effect and when I started working on me and personal growth, I realized I was, I was being a better parent for my child because my energy was different. And kids on the spectrum, they pick up on energy. And I was in a really negative place. And working, it wasn't really working. We were having a lot of fun befriending each other. Um, but I so found that I was... I was yeah. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you, how many people can get on at a time when you're doing, like, net friending? Well, it depends on the platform. So um, Blab, where we met, is no more. But uh, here on, um, on Skype, uh, I can uh, – I have a conference line that holds a 1,000 phone lines, so people can phone in. And I can hold a thousand, and I can call in twice and have two lines. So it's really a lot of people. And then um, there's other platforms that we're looking at now, where two, three, four people can actually take a seat and be on video. Right now we're all on audio, but if you be on video, two or three or four seats, and then there's a lot of other people who can listen in again in the thousands. Wow, that's great. Okay, well, I'm going to be anxious to follow up and find out what kind of other platforms allow for that many. All right, let me ask Mary. Uh, Mary, are you part of this group, and how did you know April? Hi, yes. Um, well, I have met Roy through April. April and I met, it's been over a year ago. We met in the last year. Um through both being advocates for special education because both of us have children who are um, varying degrees on the spectrum. Almost every parent has their, their child is something different, but we all have so many things in common um, with our children. But we met through that. I started working last summer trying to get a, on a bill, trying to get um, cameras in special education classrooms across the state of Tennessee, and that's how April and I met. So we have been friends since then, and on the same path with a lot of the same goals, you know, to make the world a better place for um, us as parents and our children. That is wonderful because 
This is how we really grow, folks. If you want to be involved in someone else's life where you can share ideas, learn from one another, and both of you contribute, or all of you contribute, like this show is right here, we're trying to reach out and to touch lives and to share what we've gone through as a way of helping other people to develop more things that would connect others and to give that platform of support there. You know, it's... Life can be very hard for us when we don't have anyone to talk to. And if you limit yourself to being home home because you're a caregiver, you have just shut off so much of what what you really need. We're going to need to take another break, and I'm so glad that we're getting all these people calling in tonight. This is Cheryl Jennings on Courage to Overcome, and we will be back in just a moment. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. All right, you are back with Cheryl and a host of people that have called in. I'm so excited tonight. This is wonderful to be able to get some input from several people all at once to tell us what they've been able to do that helps someone else. Now, I love this because, you know, there are so many people out there that are just hurting. They need to know that somebody cares. And just by connecting to them, you can help bring life back into them. I got to meet a lady through another friend one time, and I just called and we chatted. And when I got through, she wrote me and said, said, oh, on text said, thank you for calling. You know, have no idea how lonely I am. And I realized that we do get lonely when we're shut in. And when you have a child that you can't take in public at a moment's notice, you do have a lot of challenges trying to plan anything to be with other people. And I want to go around with the ones that have called in and just ask you, what is one thing that you've learned about helping other people or people helping you that has made a difference in your life. And Mary, I'm going to let you go first since I talked to you last. Okay. Um, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Um, right. <laughs> Even okay. better with well, you on here. Um, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. We're so glad to be here. Um, I think one thing that really helps is that you it, it definitely – takes you from the place of feeling alone and that you're not in this alone and that there are others out there like you, wherever it is, your neighborhood, across the country, across the, the globe. Um, and I think that is very empowering to keep going um, when you get stuck sometimes and are feeling down. So definitely All right. that's very so important. It, it- it does empower you. That's great. I love that. And then, 
uh, Roy. Roy, what is one thing that you've learned that has been so helpful and you just feel like you wish everybody knew this, something that has helped you? Yeah, absolutely. What really helped me, I've been online 21 years, and about a, a decade ago, a friend of mine in the U.K. said, Hey, Roy, do you know about Skype? I said, No. He said, Get on Skype. Here it is. Give me a link. I downloaded it. It's basically Internet telephone is what it is. It's voice over Internet protocol, and it's a wonderful thing because – uh, texting with someone, that's one thing. Voicing with them and or video chatting with them, that's quite another thing. And that's what I have found to be the one deciding thing because I'm very social. I love people, but I'm in a rural area here. So um, my neighbors are boring, sorry to say. So I don't get out much. <laughs> and um, I can just uh, <laughs> get on Skype or get on any one of these wonderful platforms where we can talk uh, voice to voice or go video to video. And that's what's happening now with Facebook. Facebook has got this uh, wonderful thing called Facebook Live, and you can just go on and um, get to know people in your groups, Facebook groups or your Facebook page. And um, we have a Facebook page that we just started. It's uh, facebook.com slash netfriending if anybody wants to join us there and break the isolation. Okay, facebook.com. Our Facebook, what was it? Yeah, facebook.com slash net friending, just the way it okay. sounds, net friending. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a page. Go ahead and like the page. And April does a show once a week, and I'll have her to talk about that uh, next if, if you want, Cheryl, because um, that's really helped her, I think. Oh, that'd be great. What okay, is April. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, what a great segue that was. Um yeah, I actually did a, I, I met somebody through another uh, Facebook page. We connected because she saw me um, commenting about special needs and being a special needs parent. And she reached out to me um, because she thought I might be able to help her with her child who has a lot of those diagnoses after uh, ADHD, bipolar. I mean, there's a host of diagnoses and she reached out to me to see if I could help, and I invited her into a live stream that I was doing on uh, Facebook.com slash netfriending. We actually used another platform to go into a Facebook Live, so I was able to have multiple people on screen talking and having a conversation that everyone could participate in. And she was, actually, I think I had her reach out to you, and that's how we all end up connecting um, because her daughter ended up, um, she's, she's got mental health issues and she was put in jail because she was suicidal and, um, homicidal and it's such a delicate situation, but it's so important to a, try to help people and B have other people be aware that this is going on and that there's people in crisis. And when people hear stories like that, they want to see how they can help. And um, I just thought it was a really powerful conversation, and I would have liked to have more people. But we're, we're first getting the word out about what we're doing now and trying to help others. And I just find that, for me personally, so fulfilling to be able to connect people, <clears throat> to get them the help that they're trying to find on their own, and they can't find it. Well, and I understand because this is something that I think every parent struggles with is how do you find the help that you need? Donna, I want to ask you, what is one thing that you've seen that has either helped you or helped someone that you've worked with? I think bringing the laughter in because there's so much frustration and sadness that goes on and guilt and shame as a parent because I have a child with special needs. Um, connecting with someone to share laughs with because the laughter helps you feel better and it empowers you and it makes you want to continue on that somebody understands these quirky things your kid does, the quirky things you've done to help <laughs> your kid. And in sharing the lack of laughter, as we know, is the best medicine. And it helps you laugh at yourself when you think you've, you've totally ruined something and you realize, no, this person understands. It's like a... It's like a hug across the airwaves, you know, it's like a, it, 
you know they're there, you know they're in the moment with you, and just being able to share those things and laugh. Oh, I love that. And, you know, it is true. We need to find reasons to laugh more. I had uh, a website that I had first put up before I did Courage to Overcome, and it was called Hope, Humor, and Humility on there because we need to provide hope to other people. But it's with a humble heart that you reach out and say, it's not, okay, I, I know everything about you and I know what you need to do. It is more or less, I've been in those shoes. I know it's difficult. If you need a shoulder, I'm here. I will help you. But then the laughing is so important. Now, we're going to, I'm going to have to take another break here. And when I come back, I'll just try to wind this up and give you a few little suggestions before we leave. This is Courage to Overcome. You've been listening listening with, with Cheryl Jennings, and we'll be back after this commercial. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. I am so glad that you have been with us tonight. This is Cheryl Jennings, and I have, oh, I have been so blessed with having people call in and help us to come up with some ways that they have found that have been so helpful. You know, I, the program is based on courage to overcome, and it doesn't matter what it is that you need to overcome in life. It could be that you're so shy. It could be that you have some kind of a disability. It could be that you are just struggling against bad opinions or something. I'm telling you, we can do more in our own worlds to help ourselves if we change our attitudes and if we put into practice some of the things that we've heard our guests talk about tonight. And I just want to review a minute some of the things that you can do if you're home and you are feeling so lonely. I don't want you to feel like there's no one that you can reach out to. You can get on the website on bbmglobalnetwork.com and go to Courage to Overcome page. You can listen to any of the programs that we've had on there, and we have like 25. This will make the 26th show. And we have so many people who've been great at participating in these shows and helping to bring some information that will help to make your life better. We also have got... A Facebook page that is called facebook.com slash net friending. And this is something that Roy and April and Mary had talked about tonight that they said is out there where people can join in and can talk and meet people who have special needs children, be able to help each other, to share some of the information that you've got. And then I love it that we brought up 
laughter is so very important in our lives. We have got to find the humor in the things that are maybe awkward at times, but just turn around and make it something funny. There are so many things that happen in life that if we can laugh about it, it really does help us because it produces those chemicals in our brain that make us happy, the serotonin. And it is something that doctors say you need. In fact, there was a man named Norman Cousins who was given just a few days that he was going to live because he had cancer and he did a study. He went to a, a room, motel room. He rented all these videos that were slapstick. He started watching them and laughing. And you know what? He proved them wrong. He had more than a little bit of time left to live. And it was because he had actually done a lot of laughing. And I love it in the Bible where it says, a merry heart do us good like medicine because a merry heart really does help not only ourselves but it helps those that are around us get involved in caring for someone who is at home care about them enough to send a card to be able to call them check on them see if they're just lonely if there's anything you can do for them maybe you could run to the store for them maybe you could sit with someone so that you can allow them to get out of the house and I have a mom who is 96 now she doesn't drive and when people volunteer to do things it lightens her load it makes her happy and you know if you cannot drive and you are without a car and you can't just go and come like you want to it does make life a little harder for you so just reach out and help others that you're around and make their lives a lot easier so don't forget we want to get involved in every way we can if it's special olympics if it's the spirit of survival if it's walks it's runs or whatever it is in your community look for ways that you can be involved with other people and give support to other families because they need it and then also remember that this show is here on a weekly basis because we care about you. We care about sharing the ideas that you've got. And if you want to write to me, I'd love to hear from you. It's Cheryl Jennings, C-H-E-R-Y-L-G-I-N-N-I-N-G-S at gmail.com. And I'm going to look forward to getting to visit with you again next week. And I hope to hear from more of you during the week. I got some letters this week, and it really was great. So Send us more notes, and we'll look forward to talking to you next week, the same time. Good night. You've been listening to Courage to Overcome with your host, Cheryl Jennings. Be it Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or autism, listen each week for an informative look into the lives of those challenged by these and other disabilities today on the next episode of Cheryl Jennings' Courage to Overcome. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.